Christoph, hello. Um, I will speak about architecture and architect spaces through virtual reality. And uh, to imagine something about this, it's uh, like social VR platforms that are now um, like uh, very important topics, like how to meet online with, and we are tired of Zoom and 2D screens. And this could be new option to meet in virtual reality in the body of avatars. And what I'm doing is designing the 3D space for these e uh, temporary events. And how do I get there? <laughs> um, so there have been already said many thanks to many people. And, and yeah, I, I just want to mention the Czech Republic again, and Hanna Rykova, Andrea Semancova, Katarzyna Kolbova, and people from Czech Technical University in Prague, and Faculty of Information Technology, uh, Petr Klan, and of course, Solerax uh, creators of Neos VR, and that's the platform for free that I'm using in uh, virtual reality. So the education in architecture and professional experience was really exciting because I had this chance to go to Paris, London, Los Angeles, Rotterdam, Amsterdam, but then I knew that I'm missing something in my life. And uh, like being in the architecture office, sitting there all day, working nights and weekends, I thought maybe this is not the life that I wanted to live. And um, so, in 2008, there was a crisis in, uh, in the world, and there was less architecture jobs. And I think, yeah, there, I worked in uh, 2D graphics in a post-production firm in Prague for movies, and I learned a lot with Photoshop. And later, I started to think maybe I should open up and create something by myself, just for fun. And it was in 2010. And I started to visualize my uh, emotions and uh, my feelings and in, uh, instincts. And yeah, at the beginning, I started very basically with like papers and paper collages, photos and drawings and sketches, and later with 2D graphics and uh, 2D collages with photos. And step by step, I knew I don't want to give up my education in architecture, and I started to learn rhinoceros again for 3D modeling. So I was testing endlessly like different colors and shapes and commands in a rhinoceros, and uh, it, it almost never ends. And especially, I love the colors, like the red and magenta and yellow, and and then later, in 2015, I applied again to architecture school, but not with the intention to finish as a PhD, but <laughs> to learn as much as I could with 3D programs like Blender, Grasshopper, again, Rhino, and maybe more. And I, did, I was not aware of Neos VR yet. So then I thought, maybe these the creations that I'm doing can be inhabited in 3D space, but I didn't know how. And uh, I thought it would be great if I could design spaces for temporary virtual events. And this is like fashion show Atlantis uh, by Alexander McQueen. And I was like thinking about the fashion design, about the space, and how it could look in VR. But if these were just 3D models and renders, not, not functional 3D VR models. And in, during the studies at Czech Technical University, I learned about virtual reality. And the, they say it's computer-generated simulation of three-dimensional image or environment that can be interactive with a seemingly real or physical way by a person using special electronic equipment, such as helmet with a screen inside or glass fitted with center. I was like, okay, what's that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and they, then at the uh, Faculty of Information Technology, they said, okay, you imagine you draw in sketchbook uh, space, 3 space, you use points with three coordinates, x, y, z, and then the point creates the display. And the display is changing because you're moving your mouse or your controls. So the, there are operations with matrices, like the, the point is moving, scaling, or rotating, and 
the operation with matrices are like concentrate generating the display and rendering all the time the display. That's why you need really expensive <laughs> and um, yeah, you need expensive computer for that. So in Back in 1999, I thought Matrix, that's something scary, some more like a vision of computer-generated space. Yes, it was, it was very controversial for me because I said that's something amazing and I've never heard about that. And uh, Morpheus is saying you can load anything into the space and if it's real or not, and you can generate some dream world. And it's really like that. Whatever you can build in 3D can be uh, loaded or imported to NEOS VR or other Unity program of VR programs. But of course I had to learn something more, uh, like the history of VR. And they say there was Theodore Farmer in 1618 that the vision of 3D space was created already and then in 1968 Sword of Damocles Iran Sutherland the three dimensional illusion that was real just like Fred had said but there were any other, some other attempts not really successful <laughs> so in 80s there was uh, Yaron Lanier, he said that uh, there's new term virtual reality in 1987 and in 80s there are many games and the 90s cave, the virtual environment and then uh, only in 2016 um, in stores it was available to buy HTC Vive or Oculus Rift like the headset for virtual reality so it's quite a new thing and what I did was I, want, I wanted to learn from my past uh, architecture education and I wanted to interpret some existing sites and create 3D temporary sites in NEOS VR, in social VR platform and I tried to learn from uh, Antoni Gaudi Casamela in Barcelona and from the shapes and colors and in here you can see one of the renders that was later imported it in EOS VR. I learned from the uh, shapes of the rooms in the Gaudi building and also in uh, uh, the shapes of the void and the roof but it's floating in the air, it doesn't have any construction it's just hanging in space and another it was Elevador de Santa Justa in Lisbon. Mm, yes, uh, it was another visiting research and I wanted to create some uh, space with floating miradoros, which is like a viewpoint of the city that were floating and the lift that gets you there from the maze of the buildings downstairs. And uh, yeah, I, I made it in virtual reality in NEOS VR, but it, the, the Miradorus, I couldn't program the movements. So that's something for the future. And later I had to take a course of virtual reality in NEOS VR in Faculty of Information Technology in Prague to learn how to import 3D models in VR. And this I worked with inspiration like Salvatore Dali and uh, I created some insane spaces because I was trying to test whatever color and serious 3D shapes it can bear. <laughs> so this is a movie with uh, music but you may see it's a little bit kind of uh, str with strange movements but that's because you move your hand with the desktop version of virtual reality, you move not with your controls, but with your hand and with 3D uh, VSD um, keyboards.
here in our itemmorphic video, so it's it's not like finished uh, thing, but just a flying through space. And then another VR world, because in NeoSphere you create like VR world uh, that you can enter, and each world you just import whatever you want to import from other 3D programs in a base format. And then you texture it again, or leave the texture that it was from the other programs. And this was inspired by fractals, but used in a very special way. Interpretation of Villa Rotonda. It's a very beautiful building in Italy that I wanted to use as a gallery in VR. And I created my own. <laughs> I'm usually using um, floor plans that I kind of modify in uh, 3D that I use the loft command like to connect uh, the outlines and polylines into one surface and I build this 3D model from surfaces and I, I think that in virtual reality you're not building real architecture uh, that has to stand on ground and uh, be stable it can be interactive and it can be moving but at this point i didn't really know how to make this shapes interactive i wanted to learn and this is a project uh, for new york uh, for some competition for financial district i i took i generated uh, from OpenStreetMap uh, in Blender, this 3D model, and then I use the facades. I, I, I remodeled the facades of the skyscrapers in hard shapes, also uh, by parametric design, because I wanted to use uh, the logo I Love New York 
because uh, it was a very scary place to be during the pandemic uh, because of many people are infected and uh, and the logo was created in New York for in, I think in 70s or 80s when the New York was like dangerous place and uh, because of the crime and it was not so great like right now so I love New York helped the people to see New York in a better way so this was the project, like to see the New York in better way in virtual reality, where you can meet even during the pandemic in VR. trying to learn Blender <laughs> in uh, NC State uh, in Raleigh in College of Design Department of Art and Design and uh, I'm trying to learn new this is this is what I usually do like uh, I'm interpreting some existing space uh, Hunt Library uh, done it was uh, designed by Snoheta Architectural Office and uh, I wanted to create space for robots that are actually in the library helping to find books and space for uh, studying in virtual reality together, like lecture rooms for people who come uh, there to meet the professor. And I also used the plans of the library and I created this kind of loft shapes. And uh, in this yellow space, they're supposed to be interactive robots because it doesn't really make sense uh, to put um, aesthetic interactive robots into VR but it's supposed to be like a gallery and interactive statues because a robot means worker, slave, someone machine that works but I want to make like beautiful statues interactive that people can say when they come to the lecture with the professor into VR world so this is one of the first sketches and I tried to use in Blender some layers uh, uh, and images that have, like, it looks like a painting or strokes, but it's moving. This is how it looks, the environmental Blender that I'm using now. And so I did this kind of blooming robot, <laughs> just a small motion, and I'll try to put it in Neosphere and in Unity, but first I have to learn unity but I'm also struggling with this but it's a lot of fun it's just a new thing so this is what I said to my professor here at NT State that I'll continue learning blender and unity and work with depth images and test the 3d models in NeosVR and in unity and uh, like work with virtual reality 